Are you new to watercolor and looking for some watercolor ideas that are simple and easy, but also have the wow factor? In this tutorial, I'll take you step by step through this fun and super easy desert sunset painting. You'll notice I've split my paper in half using quarter inch painter's tape. Sometimes a single large sheet of watercolor paper can be so intimidating, so splitting it into smaller sections to create small practice paintings can be a great way to minimize any fears of recovering such a large area with paint. For this sunset sky, I begin with a large round brush and wet the paper all over with clean water. You want your paper to be glossy wet, but no puddles. Next, I mix up a generous amount of phthalo blue on my palette. This just involves dabbing your wet brush in the paint to activate it, swirling it around on the palette and adding more water and paint until you're confident you have enough paint to cover the sky area. I take my brush and use a quick but steady side to side motion, gradually moving downward to paint what's called a graded wash. I want it to start dark and get lighter towards the bottom. You can tip your board to encourage the paint to flow down and while it's still wet, you can stroke your brush back and forth until it's nice and even. Once your paint begins to dry, it is important to leave it alone or you'll end up accidentally lifting paint or creating splotches and unevenness. Now for the yellow portion, this can be tricky. We want to create a perfect gradient from blue to yellow without mixing any green. So the key here will be to paint the two colors right up next to each other without them touching. My paper is still wet from the water I applied at the beginning, so I grab some pure lemon yellow on my clean brush and start another flat wash just at the point where the blue has faded to white. Again, you can tilt your board to encourage the paint to flow. Now I take my orange, this is Transparent Orange by Winsor & Newton, and paint a wash of orange just touching the bottom of the yellow and brushing it all the way to the bottom of my frame. Don't overdo your brush strokes here. You can still blend it while it's wet, but once it's smooth, leave it alone and let it dry. My first layer is now dry, so I'm gonna apply another layer of intense colors, adding a vignette around the corners. To do this, I will use the same method I started with. I paint over the whole surface again with clean water, this time just being careful not to scrub too hard or it may disrupt my nice smooth first wash. Again, make sure it's glossy wet and not sopping. If there are pools of water around the edges, you can soak those up with your brush. I'm taking some ultramarine blue this time and going back into the top and corners of the painting to intensify the blue. I'm painting in kind of this rainbow shape to create this curve in our blue, a vignette effect. I rinse my brush, then go in and darken the orange one more time as well. It almost becomes a vignette both on the bottom and on the top. I think that second layer makes the orange look incredibly brilliant. I add another layer of yellow too, painting right up to the blue layer but not mixing the two colors. You can see we've successfully avoided creating any kind of green between the blue and yellow, which is exactly what we wanted. We need to let this completely dry before adding the cactus silhouettes. You can speed up the process with a hair dryer if you want. I'm going to sketch on the cacti using my mechanical pencil. Of course, the cactus is just a tall straight beam with arms that come out to the side and then immediately curve up. Usually the arms are all different heights, but shorter than the center beam. You can draw your cacti any way you want. Try to vary their shape and size to make your composition more interesting. Once you're happy with your drawing, mix up some black. My favorite black is an equal mixture of indigo and burnt umber. Because the paint will need to go on pretty thick to make it dark enough, you'll want to mix up a lot of paint. I'm using a tiny round brush to paint in the cacti. And for the foreground, I'm just painting some low hills. Really take your time and paint slow here. My final touch is just adding a few stars to the darker top portion of the painting. For this, I'm using my opaque white gouache, just dabbing on some tiny white stars with the tip of my round brush, making them different sizes, and trying to arrange them in a random but pleasing composition. And there is our lovely desert silhouette. 
Be sure to subscribe and like and comment below if you have any questions. And tag me on Instagram if you decide to try this painting. Thanks for watching.